Okay, fuckers, Archie Luxury here. We're continuing the 10 greatest wristwatches of all time. And six spot, six spot goes to the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak. The Gerald Gentra Design Classic. And this came out in the early 70s, 1972 to be exact, fuckers. And it basically saved Audemars Piguet. Audemars Piguet, one of the holy trinity. The Audemars Piguet... Um, sorry, the Holy Trinity, AP, PP, VC, Audemars Piguet, Pedek, Philippe, and Vacher, and Constantine. And it certainly deserves to be in this list here. The Royal Oak. The Royal Oak then spawned the Royal Oak Offshore, the big sporty version. But to be completely honest with you, the first Royal Oak was actually a sports watch. It was a sports watch in the same genre as the Patek the Patek Nautilus, except it was first, it was before the Nautilus, the Nautilus was basically a, uh, this is a cheeky way of putting it, but it was, they looked at the success of the Royal Oak and said, we need to do a steel sports watch, they got Gerald Gentra in, the same designer, and they uh, made a Patek, with Patek Nautilus, which was a steel version of a Steel Patek version of the Royal Oak. But uh, the Royal Oak itself, a wonderful piece. 1972 it came out and it changed the face of watchmaking. Steel was now a luxury material. A luxury watch could be steel. And it also had that integrated bracelet. Completely revolutionized the watch industry with the Jumbo. The Jumbo was 39 mils. This was when good watchmakers wanted to make a piece as small as possible. So it went against the tide. It was groundbreaking. And it's changed the whole watch industry. The Royal Oak. A royal, 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 rightly royal member of the 10 greatest wristwatches of all time, fuckers. Okay, okay, fuckers. Slot 7. We haven't got time to muck around. Slot 7 goes to the Vacheron. Vacheron Constantine dress watch. That's right, fuckers. Vacheron, it doesn't matter if it's a complication or a simple, elegant dress watch. A precious metal Vacheron. What a wonderful piece to behold and to enjoy. Vacheron, one of the old established firms, a member of the Holy Trinity. The three brands, AP, PP, and VC, and Vacheron is considered the oldest member and it's also considered the grandfather member you've got Patek which is the current king you've got Vacheron the grandfather and you've got Audemars the up and rising young prince and I've got to tell you Vacheron itself has made some wonders absolute delights a very very discreet brand Vacheron is for the enthusiast in the know Novo Riche traders and Fleas would buy a Patek. A true purist would buy a Vacheron Constantine. And I have to say, Vacheron itself there, they make some of the most wonderful movements, wonderful just overall quality of the piece. A true brand for the watch connoisseur who doesn't need recognition from uneducated plebs and pieces of shit. Vacheron, a true legend in watchmaking circles, and rightly so, they get this, they get this spot, the seventh spot in the ten greatest wristwatches of all time, fuckers. Vacheron Constantine, a proud member of the ten greatest wristwatches of all times, fuckers. Okay, eighth spot, fuckers. Eighth spot in the 10 greatest wristwatches of all time. And it goes to the Rolex Day Date. That's right, fuckers. The Day Date. The choice of captains of industry, leaders, world leaders, military dictators, and of course, corrupt officials. The Rolex Day Date. Date. It doesn't get any more classier than this. And, uh, I mean, to many, many, many uh, fans there, they, they would say the, the date just is probably more popular. That's because it's more affordable. But the day date, come on, fuckers. That is the true 
the true the true statement of your success is a Rolex day date and let's be completely frank there you know in sales there is no need for an MBA or you know a master's degree no it's results based fuckers you either sell or you get the fucking ass and the Rolex day date it's the ultimate, the ultimate piece to tell people you're successful, you're a winner, you're doing well. I mean, you know, presidents, presidents have worn the Rolex Day Date. And they've been worn by captains of industry. Captains of industry, fuckers. Even Patrick Bateman, an American psycho, if you read the book, he was wearing a Rolex Day Date. The ultimate symbol of success, the Rolex Day Date, an enduring symbol of people who are winners, not fucking losers, not fucking losers. And I tell you what, the Rolex Day Date, it's, it's, a, it's a piece which is going to stay there forever. One of the ten greatest wristwatches, the Rolex Day Date, fuckers. And in ninth spot, there could only be the Rolex GMT. That's right. This is a wristwatch which has become an icon. And it would be wrong to include the 10 greatest watches of all time and not include the GMT. And contrary to what a lot of fuckers say, the watch doesn't have to be something I've owned. I've worn a GMT for a, for a month or so, but I've never actually owned one. I do have an Explorer, but the Explorer is not the iconic treasure that the GMT is. Explorer 2 is a great watch. I love it. But we're talking the 10 greatest wristwatches of all time. It's got to be the GMT, fuckers. Got to be the GMT, designed originally, originally for Pan Am, the world's greatest airline. And this is before Pan Am went guts up. Guts up, fuckers. In the, uh, the 50s, Pan Am was probably one of the greatest airlines in the world. What a shame. This is the way the American economy has gone so, so fucked over time. It's like General Motors. General Motors is another company that had a great, great American legend that just fucked it up with shitty service, bad products, and just uncompetitiveness, fuckers. And the GMT itself, it sets the standard in dual time zone pieces is probably the most usable usable type of piece for travelers the world has seen yes you can get a reverso duo and that's a very clever thing to do as well but without having to touch the thing you can glance at your wrist and see the time zone in different locations it's wonderful it's the the gmt was so revolutionary when it came out and it's got to be included fuckers it absolutely has to be included in the top 10 the rolex gmt the rolex gmt which is securing ninth spot in this list fuckers and finally we come to 10th 10th spot and in this place here I've really got two different variants. I've got the Patek Philippe Perpetual Calendar and the Patek, Patek Philippe Perpetual Calendar Chronograph. So this is the Patek Philippe Grand Complication and nothing does it like a Grand Complication. Most people now don't understand the significance of it, but this is a mechanical piece which has so many functions. A piece that knows how many days are in a month, including leap years. Absolutely amazing piece of technology. And Patek Philippe was at the forefront of this fabulous, fabulous invention. Not to be outdone, Patek brought out the uh, perpetual calendar chronograph. And uh, i got to tell you, the, the perpetual calendar chronograph, one of the legends, absolute horological legend. And if I, um, if I won big time, if I got my own TV show and big contract and got my own SL Mercedes, the next thing I'd buy is a uh, Patek Philippe perpetual calendar chronograph. It's the, the true exit watch. When you own one of these, you need nothing else. It's just horological excellence at its best. And I would, um, 
I would love, absolutely love, to have a Patek Philippe perpetual calendar or a perpetual calendar chronograph. And people like John Lennon, he had a 2499. It's just one of the, it's, it's, it's the, the horological, I think it's the epitome. Now, there are more complicated things. Patek has done more complicated things. But I, I think in true, true appreciation of the craft of horology, the perpetual calendar chronograph would have to be the top of my tree. And it's, it's something I'd, uh, I'd certainly love to have. I'd love to have one indeed, fuckers. So there we go. That brings it up. The uh, 10 greatest wristwatches of all time. I'm Archie Luxury. I'm a luxury goods guru and expert. I've got over 4,000 videos on luxury goods and luxury living. Please check out my channel, like my video, subscribe, and tell me what you fuckers think of my content. See you later, fuckers. We specialize in the repair of Rolex and Patek Philippe watches. We've been doing the same thing for more than 25 years. We have a Rolex technician certified by Rolex who actually used to work for the company for many years, like if we do in the work on the factory. We completely disassemble the watch and we put it to work, like brand new condition. When you get a pre-owned watch, it's like if you get in a brand new unit. The only difference is the money.